Hello, I am Min Jin Ying from Chuncheon Hammam Church. I met Jesus Christ while living in the U.S. as a Korean-American immigrant. I want to share how I've experienced the amazing power of the gospel that unites all nations as one. I live in Portland, Oregon, to where I've immigrated from Korea when I was 16. At first, everything was shocking to me. I didn't know how to do or speak anything. I felt like suddenly I became a fool, as if I was born a baby, learning everything all over again. You say hello when you answer the phone, but at first, no one understood my hello. I thought, where should I put the accent? Hello? Hello. (laughs) Hello. I practiced so many times like this, but still people wouldn't understand it. Even if I just hear a phone ringing, I would feel very nervous. I became afraid of answering the phone. Later, I started to have many American friends, but I couldn't feel the sense of belonging. I thought I needed to adopt to a new culture as soon as I can. And so I became like a yes man, always imitating them. My friends would say, let's eat hamburgers, then I would eat a hamburger. Let's watch a movie, then I would watch a movie. Or if they say something is fun, then I would think, oh, maybe that is fun. Later, I became like someone who couldn't express her own feelings or opinions, and I felt like I was hiding myself to them. Depending on which social group I was meeting, I always had to change myself to fit in with them. People like me who immigrated to a new country before or during their adolescence are called the 1.5 generation, and I hated the fact that I was. I thought I should have moved to the U.S. earlier, complaining my life was trapped between two different cultures. I also compared my appearance to other Americans, complaining why I was born as an Asian. If only I could change my fate, I would be born again as white and would start a new life. As I became a college student, My identity issue grew bigger. Feeling skeptical about studying, I decided to take a one year off from school. Then I thought, what is the purpose of my life? I couldn't see where my life was going. Although I grew up as a Christian, I realized that I didn't have a true relationship with God in my life. Only then, I started to have an eagerness to personally meet the Creator who made me. I wanted to ask God, why did you make me? Which path should I take? If only God could answer me, I would really live according to His will. Since then, every early morning I prayed to God, earnestly asking, God, please come and meet with me. Please show me the way. For several months I prayed like this, and perhaps it was God's answer. My mom introduced me to one sister from Korea. She came to visit her relatives with her son, who was planning to study in the U.S., and she was telling them the gospel. And my mom, who was friends with them, also met her and heard the gospel. When I first met her, she asked me whether I have met Jesus personally. When I heard this question, tears came out of my eyes. I told her I haven't met him, and that it was why I was so frustrated. So I started Bible study with her, and just in time, she told me that there was a summer retreat at our church. So I decided to follow her to visit Hamam Church in South Korea. During the summer retreat, I repeatedly heard about the gospel, and it led me to truly meet God the Creator. I heard that Jesus, who was a historical man, died and rose from the dead, and that his resurrection was the historical fact, and through this proof, you can confirm that Jesus was God. I was so shocked to hear that. Ah, the resurrected Jesus was really my Lord and my Creator. Then I recognized my problem. Instead of Jesus being my Lord, I was the master of my life. It was the reason why I was so frustrated, tired, trying to carry all my burdens myself. The reason I had a hard time about my identity was because I idolized myself. There never has been a time that I changed my master for myself to Jesus. Even if I said I wanted to meet Jesus, I couldn't meet or have any relationship with him because I've never truly repented. I repented the sin of not believing in Jesus and living my life as my own master, and I accepted Jesus as my Lord in my heart. Since Jesus became the Lord in my heart, I was so happy just because of the fact that I met the Creator. All my worries were gone and it was more than enough, and I found my true identity. Regardless of my nationality, or ethnicity. I belong to the eternal world. 
and I was sent to this world only temporarily to fulfill the mission of preaching the gospel. As I was praying, God told me, I will save every nation that you set your foot upon. I asked God, Why are you telling these things to me, for I am small and weak? He answered, I will do the work. Please only give your heart to me and just stand by my side. I realized, Ah, the reason he gave me the mission was to have a loving relationship with me. If I only look to Jesus and walk together with him, he will be the one that will fulfill his work. Coming back to the U.S., I joyfully shared about Jesus to everyone that I knew, and I also did street evangelism. Seeing how I've changed all of a sudden, my friends would say, before, sad means in. After, happy means in. Between, Jesus. And I started to long for the word of God from Hammam Church. Every day I read the pastor's sermons that were posted on our church website, and I wrote testimonies in response. All the members from our church write down testimonies and send them to our pastor so he can know each member's spiritual status, regardless of where they are. As I also kept writing my testimonies, meditating and praying with the Word of God, my passion for the gospel grew bigger. Our pastor would sometimes read my testimony to the community during their service, and they would pray for me and for America. This greatly encouraged me and reminded me that the church community that prayed for me was always together with me. I started to have campus worship service with people I met while evangelizing. And every day I led early morning prayer and evening worship service at home with family. Also, the relatives who heard the gospel from the sister have also changed. They too were starting to preach the gospel and have worship service at their own places. After three years, the sister visited us again from Korea. We were all very delighted to see her. We gathered in one place to have a worship service together, and we were so much filled with fire in our hearts. We realized God is very pleased when we gather and worship Him together, so we have decided to keep having worship service together as one. And so Hamam Small Church was established in Oregon. Amen. God made a person like me, who is young and not worthy, to become a leader of our small church. Since then, I've experienced amazing things that I've never imagined. I and our members only just joyfully preached the gospel at the places we belonged, but we saw this gospel getting spread to people from all different backgrounds. Soon after we started together, Americans also started to join our service. Roger was the first American who visited our small church. He happened to see one of our church members preaching at her workplace and was so touched and followed her to our service, even though it took him one and a half hours to drive there. Though I was a lot younger than him, he would take notes and pay very close attention to my words during our service. And he was amazed and said, I've heard about the resurrection only on days like Easter, but I've never seen anyone like you guys who can preach the resurrection of Jesus with such great assurance. I showed him John 69 and told him, that we need to repent the sin of not believing in Jesus. Then for weeks, I repeatedly told him the gospel, and one day he called me. When he was driving off to work, he heard the voice of God from his heart saying, Roger, who is your Lord? He said that he was very sorry to God, that he lived as a Christian, but in the center of his heart, Jesus was not his Lord. He himself was his own Lord. He pulled his car over and wept bitterly for a while. He said he had never cried that much before. Since then, Roger always repeats these words wherever he goes. Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus is my Lord. Then he wanted to visit our church in Korea for the winter retreat. He received some time off from his company and came to visit the church with me. This was the first time he has ever visited another country. So he was very nervous, but I was thankful that I could understand and help him. I told him that in Korea, they usually only use chopsticks at the restaurants, so he had to always carry his own forks with him. (laughs) It reminded me when I first moved to the U.S. Just like I practiced how to say hello in English, Roger practiced very hard how to say nice to meet you in Korean. 
But when he actually met them, he was too excited and forgot everything he practiced. When he first met our members who came to greet him at the bus terminal, he was so happy and burst into tears as if he had met his long-lost family. Roger had warm fellowship with our members, and he went back to the U.S. with greater assurance in the resurrection. Now he is even more passionate than us who told him the gospel. And he is all in for saving souls. Recently, he s chosen to lead a service in the town of Silverton, near his neighborhood every week, so he could preach the gospel to about 75 people. Amen. Not only Roger, but I have also seen other Americans who changed through the gospel. Just like Roger, they longed to see our church in Korea that taught us the gospel. And so I traveled to Korea with them a few times. When it was time for them to go back home, after enjoying the family in Christ in Korea, they cried and said, We are being sent to America as the witnesses of the resurrection. I saw how these Americans becoming witnesses of the resurrection, just like our church members in Korea. And I realized that the gospel we have is really the global gospel that surpasses the national and rational boundaries. Amen. Also, Mexicans started to come to our small church service. One of our small church members preached the gospel to her Mexican employee named Jose. He could not speak English very well, so she taught him English and preached the gospel to him. Jose repented and believed in Jesus as his Lord, and now he has become the leader of our Mexican group. Jose lives far away from his family, but he calls our church members as his mom, dad, and uncles. enjoying the true family in Christ. While I was working at my parents' restaurant, I also preached the gospel to our employees who are Mexicans. They haven't been in the U.S. too long, so they spoke very little English. So I told them in broken Spanish that I learned from them. Jesus murió. Jesus died. Jesus resucitó. Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus es el Señor. Jesus is the Lord. Their eyes were twinkling as they listened to the gospel, so I repeatedly shared the gospel with them. Even when we were working, I would ask, ¿Cuál es la prueba? What is the proof? And they would say, Resurrección. Resurrection. Soon they wanted to come to our church service, which actually surprised me a lot. After a few days, they really came to our service, and they wrote testimonies of repenting their sin of not believing in Jesus. And in the following weeks, their family also came. Even in hardships living as immigrants, they no longer focus on their own problems, but now they hope and pray that this gospel could be spread to Mexico as well. Among them, Salvador went back to his homeland and is preaching the gospel even in a poor condition. I recently went to Mexico with some of our church members to visit him for three weeks. The place was unknown and a small clan society lived there. It was very dangerous, but we came back safely because of the prayers of our pastor and the community. We preached the gospel to Salvador's family and relatives and the children in the village. Most of them repented and believed in Jesus as their Lord. Amen. Some cried, saying, Thank you for coming to tell us the gospel. Even in the danger of persecution, they confessed that they would follow only Jesus, and they started to have a small church service with Salvador. Like so, we only joyfully shared about Jesus in our lives, but this seed kept getting spread to a lot of people with different ethnicities. This made us experience for real how the gospel itself has the amazing power. Right now, in our small church, there are Americans, a Guatemalan, Koreans, and Mexicans. We give worship service together in different languages, Korean, English, and Spanish. Jose interprets my English into Spanish. Although we have language barriers, we give a heavenly worship service with true joy and freedom. Amen. Whenever we confess together with tears that Jesus is our Lord, I am so amazed and touched that we Gentiles became one together through the gospel. Before, I hated the fact that I was 1.5 generation immigrant, but God rather used me through my weaknesses. If I moved to America a lot earlier, I wouldn't have been able to speak Korean this well. 
nor play this important role of translating our pastor's Korean sermons into English for our American-speaking members. Also, since I experienced the hardships living as an immigrant, I could understand their hearts and have a passion for the people that are not only Americans, but also other immigrants that are from all over the world. And since my mission is to save souls, now I enjoy meeting new people and learning new cultures. As 1.5 generation immigrant, I had lost my sense of identity. But Jesus came and met with me through the proof of the resurrection. And so I could find my real status and my vision of preaching the gospel. And he let me witness the power of the gospel. They can make Gentiles become one together. Now I will keep joyfully running the race of a missionary until all people in all nations become one together in the Lord. Amen. Thank you.